Well, hey kids, how's it going? It's 12.04, may I be the first to say a good afternoon. Welcome in to all of you. Glad to have you with us on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. We've got what I hope to be three full hours of radio excellence on this Wednesday, March 27, 2024. This, of course, is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Matt Murphy. Listen online, 99.7 on your radio dial. You can also find us on any internet streaming platform of your choosing. Just type in Super Talk 99.7 WTN and off you go. We invite you to download our app. Uh, you can take us wherever you go. You can also watch us on Super Talk TV for you masochists in the listening audience. Uh, hello, here I am on Super Talk TV, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. More on that in a moment. If you're watching on Super Talk TV, by the way, you'll see uh, I'm on my best behavior today. As a matter of fact, I went into the closet and I pulled out my red Boy Scout leader jacket. I've never been a Boy Scout, and I certainly have never been a Boy Scout leader. But I feel like with this jacket on, not only will I be prepared, but I'll also be kinder and gentler to Tennessee politicians today. At least, that's the hope. Bell K's behind the glass. Don't be sure weak sauce. No, 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 rip not em. weak sauce. Rip them. Uh, no, I got my jacket on. No, rip them. I'm going to steal the jacket. 1960s. Don't take it off. I'll it's nice, it. isn't it? I'll steal it. I found this at, a, uh, I found this at the Nashville Flea Market. It really? Had, yeah, it had already had the, but it's a Boy Scout jacket from 1968. I'm very excited. It's a leader jacket. Found it last year. Pretty good. That's kind of cool. Anyway, watch on Super Talk TV and you'll see what we're talking about. It did not have patches on it when I got it. Otherwise, I would have left the patches on, but they had already been removed. Now, that's the voice of Bell K. We call him Headless Bell because he chooses to participate by voice, but not by sight. You can do that by sight. Super Talk TV up and running. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. He does, however, entitle the episodes. And today is episode 540, and it is entitled Matt Murphy, Every Politician and Journalist's Best Friend and Homeboy. Yo. Libertarian Lunch, noon to three. Cake. Did you say cake? Cake. There's no cake. There should be cake. There should be pie. What's a pie? There should be pie. Boston cream pie. There should be pie. I, uh, I have a few things to say about yesterday, obviously. And we'll take your telephone calls. We'll take your suggestions. We will take your... Yeah, Aaron, he did say that. Bell said, I'm going to steal the jacket. Yeah, he ain't stealing nothing. Although I'm going to have to take it off because it's too hot in the studio. Uh, but it was uh, it's brisk outside today, but it's up to 80 degrees this weekend somehow. I have no idea how that is. Uh, but, um, yeah. Uh, Sandra says, Matt, is that stolen Boy Scout valor? Hmm. That's a good <laughs> yes is the That's answer. Cute. <laughs> yeah, it is the answer to that question. Look, it was on the rack. The guy wanted 30 bucks for it. I could not resist. It's all wool. It's very warm. It is uh, authentic. And I like all of those things. And I, I, this, I'm actually pretty proud of this. It, I need to get into some of the issues of the day and we're going to do this, but indulge me for a moment. I went down to Franklin. I was in Franklin at a business location that I will not name. And in this Franklin business location, I just figured out what was wrong. I just figured this out. Hold on. Hold on. Bell, fill for a minute. Oh, you're putting your condom on. <laughs> Please say Mike condom. Oh, yeah, your Mike condom. Your, your, win, your windscreen. At least say, don't just say. Your personal there, there windscreen. People, there are people going to lunch. There are people with their children in their cars. And you said... You're putting your condom. I, you know, on. I I apologize. Let me re, let me start over. Uh, you're putting your prophylactic on. Yeah. Well, that's that's about right. Uh, yes, I did uh, have to put that on because I don't like all of these germies that Dan Mandis and Chris Hand spit into this microphone, one way or the other. Uh, so no, the what I'm what I'm proudest about is uh, I was in Franklin and we were perusing some of the shops. Have you been down to some of these shops in Franklin? They're very inexpensive. Where you talking about like where savory spice is? Yeah, right down from this actual shop, which will not go named, right across the street from Savory Spice. I was standing in the shop with a good friend of mine, Grant. Hello, Grant. Hello, Jenny. Uh, and E. And we are looking at a flag on the wall, and it was pretty kick ass. It said it was just a black flag with white lettering that said outlaw on it, and they wanted one hundred and thirty five dollars for it. And we literally on we went on our phones and found it for seventy bucks, standing in the store online, delivered right to our door, like at half the cost. This is what we're dealing with in Franklin. And I found a jacket very similar to this one that looked authentic, and it looked pretty cool. And it wasn't a Boy Scout jacket; it was just a red jacket. And I like red, and so it was like five hundred dollars, ridiculous. And I said, I'm not paying that. 
for anything, most anything, is not worth $500. And then a week later, I found this jacket at the uh, thrift store for like 30 bucks. Proud of my find. Uh, all right, there's lots to get into, um, not the least of which is the date. Uh, it is March 27th. Last year. I'm sorry, what number show are we on? 540. Okay, thank you. I was actually trying to remember that this morning. Last year, on this date, at this time, I was in Green Hills attempting to get to the Covenant School. As we had heard of a shooting that had occurred there, Dan Mandis was on the radio, Pamela Fur was on the radio. Eventually, Brian Wilson would be a part of the team coverage that day. And a lot of things changed that day in Nashville. I won't say everything changed that day in Nashville, but a lot changed. And sadly, for many of us who desire answers for what happened a year ago today, there are not a lot of answers forthcoming. Because we have been stymied in any and all efforts, despite some of the writings of this individual leaking otherwise efforts to try to glean or get inside of the mind and figure out what exactly was creating a dynamic within this person that manifested itself through the evil that was present that day at the covenant school we know a little we don't know a lot what frustrates so many of us about this, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, I don't want to put thoughts in your head, but I've talked to enough of you, and I've talked with enough of you over the years since the Covenant School was attacked and six people died. What is so frustrating is it seems that there are two sets of rules when it comes to this type of information. That there are two sets of standards when it comes to this type of killing that if the media decides the individual was motivated by some sort of cause or some sort of thought or some sort of impetus that the media can exploit then everything's fair game if they can label it white nationalism or white supremacy or right-wing terrorism, homegrown terrorism, then you're allowed to look through any and all of the writings, any and all of the evidence, it seems. It, it, and I'm not saying that this happens in this way every time. But I do know to, I do know the pattern here that if the mentally insane, mentally deranged, and anyone that's willing to end, let's just start here with the standard. Anyone that's willing to indiscriminately slaughter human beings is not a human being. By my definition, anyone who is willing to indiscriminately take human life, whether it's at a city hall in Moscow, Russia, or at a private school in Nashville, Tennessee, those are that is not an example of humanity. I understand that we have to be better than them. But if you're looking for sympathy out of Matt Murphy, that people that just indiscriminately slaughtered 140 plus individuals at a city hall at a concert in Moscow that one of these dudes got his ear cut off. You're barking up the wrong tree, man. No sympathy from me. Similarly, I do not for the life of me understand why we have decided as a community, as a state, or some of us have decided as a community and as a state that we are going to, quote, unquote, protect this information from the general public. 
Why? What are you protecting? I understand the broader debates. I understand that some people run to the gun control corner. I understand that some people run to the mental health corner. I understand those broad strokes. I've been talking about them for half of my life. But I cannot understand or abide why you would protect the community or shield the community from valuable information because you want to protect a group of people. And that's what it feels like, whether it's true or not. I believe it's true. I understand that it it is somehow a debatable point, but I could go over for you all of the instances, not just in this case, of individuals who identify as transgender, individuals who identify as LGBTQ+, whatever, two-spirit, individuals who have this pronoun debate among I mean, these individuals who identify in this certain way it seems to me a pattern has developed that that new that gets squashed by the mainstream media that news is tamped down it's never about the individual and their motivations at that point if their motivations are out of right-wing extremism or racially motivated hatred like in buffalo and i don't have any problem with dealing with that as these situations come up and more broadly dealing with the gun debate and more broadly dealing with the mental health debate. Why is it that this subject is off limits? Why is it that this aspect of this situation is off limits? Why do we seem to protect murderers if those murderers are motivated by a specific set of circumstances? Why? What are we protecting? Well, we're not protecting the killer. She's dead. In most of these cases, we aren't protecting the killer. They're dead. What are we protecting? I believe that we are being forced away from the conversation. That we are being told that we're not allowed to have the conversation. And by preventing us from gathering information, we cannot present to the general public the very real narrative pattern that we have seen growing over these last few years. The pharmaceutical industry, the transgender medical community, the mental health community, those that want to drug our children, they have answering to do. Because I'm going to suggest to you that we have, as a society, sadly, sent a message to broad swaths of our young generation that they deserve to be happy every moment of their lives, that they deserve to never have any discomfort in their lives, that they should live a life that is free of worry, that is free of sadness, And if you feel any of these things, if you express that, don't worry, there's a pill for that. This will make you happy. If you express any of that, you're asked, do you feel comfortable in your own body? And then we go down the road of transgenderism. And you create, even, with, even when you have serious gender dysphoria, in front of you, you create a dynamic where the individual you're talking about who already has a lot going on in their bodies, let's say they're 13, 14, 15 years old, 
they come away with the belief that they have a that they deserve to be happy every second of their lives. And when they're not, they get angry at others. Regardless of where you are on the debate regarding transgenderism with adults, this deal of telling 12-year-old children that their central mental issue, the suggestion that it can be solved, and whether you're saying it or not, it does not matter. It's what they're hearing. The suggestion that this idea of, oh, your problem is you really want to be a girl or you really want to be a boy. You're talking to 12-year-olds. You present that idea in a 13 or a 14 or a 15-year-old's head and they come away with the belief that this solves everything. And when it doesn't solve everything, they get angry. And they lash out. Now, nah, but don't worry about it. Go to another psychologist or psychiatric specialist. They'll prescribe you some more drugs. They'll numb the pain. Every emotion that God has given us matters. Anger matters. Happiness matters. Sadness matters. Pick one. They all matter. Numbing them or telling someone that there's something magic that they can do or take it's not working. Now, I am not a doctor and I want to make sure that you understand none of what I have said today means that I do not see a value in drugs, pharmaceuticals, psychotropic drugs even. This does not mean that I don't believe in gender dysphoria. I understand that gender dysphoria happens. I understand that it happens a hell of a lot less than what we're seeing in our society. We're over-drugging our kids. Most parents are doing this because they think it'll make their kids happy. It, it's not working. These are the discussions that I want to have. I want to have these discussions specific to, and I don't say her name often, Audrey Hale. And I'm not able to. Because from the moment this started, from the moment that we found out what happened... The political left decided that it was going to be all about guns. Every time we have one of these tragedies in our country, we cannot get to this discussion because they refuse to not talk about that discussion. The gun is a symptom of something greater that is wrong in our society. It is a manifestation of the anger that these people are feeling. I understand their psychosis. I understand that there are mental issues. I also understand that what I've told you over the last 20 minutes matters. Unless we are willing to have a very real conversation. And look, I put a big target on my back in talking about it, okay? Because I'm going to get it from all sides. You're not a doctor. You're not a psychologist. You're not a medically trained. You're not this. You're not that. You're not anything. And the pharmaceutical industry is huge and powerful. And they're in the business of getting your kids to take drugs. And business is good. Business is good. God bless the people that died a year ago today. And let's pray it never happens again. Back in a moment. Yeah. 
Jeff and his team started Members Nutrition with a simple concept, a simple idea. The idea that vitamin supplements and health wellness products in the marketplace are A, overpriced, not affordable to everybody, and B, they're not made right here in the good old USA. So you don't really know the quality of the product that's in the bottle. Now, do you? Well, you do at Members Nutrition because they are made right here in the good old USA. And just as I was talking about the overdrugging of our society, and you know what? I'm telling you, folks, there are naturally occurring vitamins and supplements on this planet Earth that can help alleviate problems in your life. If you need immunity support, if you need men's health, women's health from a general standpoint, if you're looking for uh, a, a immunity health or digestive health in your body, I mean, whatever you're looking for, I want you to go to membersnutrition.com and see some of the incredible supplements. They've got the ingredients right there. You see what you're taking right there. It's made right in here in the good old USA and available to you at a lower price point than the big box stores. Let's go to Members Nutrition together. I've been ordering from Members Nutrition and I encourage you to do the same. MembersNutrition.com. That's MembersNutrition.com. You get 50% off if you order right now. You don't have to put in any offer code or whatnot. They take it at checkout. It's MembersNutrition.com. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer. You close in as little as 21 days. No home inspections, no lockboxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Matt Murphy for Members Nutrition. I want to tell you about the Members Nutrition difference, and I want to encourage you to go over to the Members Nutrition website. Number one, they believe at Members Nutrition that they can sell vitamins and supplements at a lower cost point, and they're doing it every single day at MembersNutrition.com. Number two, they want to make these products right here in the United States of America, not from some overseas company, and they do that every single day. I encourage you to go to MembersNutrition.com. You'll get 50% off your purchase price at checkout. You don't have to put in any codes. Just go to MembersNutrition.com. Once again, MembersNutrition.com. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Mandison. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at CaliforniaClosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation. Friends, it's Matt Murphy for Craft Body Scan. I always tell you to be prepared. I was talking about wearing my Boy Scout jacket uh, that I got at the thrift store today. I invite you to be prepared. You should be prepared when it comes to medical issues. And you can be prepared through Craft Body Scan to help you understand what's going on in your body before you feel it. So Craft Body Scan is a simple concept. You know, CT scans have been around for a while, but that technology is advancing so much that now they can pinpoint issues in your body long before you feel symptoms. Whether it's your heart, your lungs, or any other part of your body, they do full body scans. I don't talk about them enough because right now... They get you in the door. They want to talk with you. They want to get you in the mindset of preventative health through their heart and lung scan. It's a $1,300 plus value for only $149. Now, that's $1,300 per scan. They're doing it for a couple. Bring in a loved one. Bring your significant other. And they'll give you a scan for $149. It's pretty incredible. I've done it myself, and I encourage you to do it as well. CraftBodyScan.com. Craft for the C. CraftBodyScan.com. Or give them a call at 615-436-1000. 436-1000 for Craft Body Scan.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Opening thoughts on the anniversary of the Covenant School shooting that happened a year ago today. By the way, a programming note. A programming note. Cameron Sexton on the show tomorrow. That will be at 135, just after Scott Spiggy. Scott Spiggy's going to sit in and, and join in on our conversation with Cameron Sexton. We'll talk to Cameron about where we are with regard to the Freedom Scholarship Fund and the School Choice Act going through the halls of the General Assembly. That's at 135 tomorrow. We also have Abramowitz coming on at 1230 tomorrow. I don't want to give him, I don't want to shortchange Steve Abramowitz. And then uh, Monday. What is Monday? What date is Monday? It's April 1st. April 1st. I will be out that day. Why? To be safe. Well, you're going to miss Governor Bill Lee then. Oh, no, no, no. I have to come in then. Governor Bill Lee will not only be on the show with us, I am hopeful there's a better than 50% chance that he will be in studio with us. I want to ask him if he's related to uh, Lee Marvin. You've gone through Bruce Lee. How many have you got? You went Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee. Bruce Lee. Peggy Lee. Peggy Lee. Lee Majors. Um, who else? Lee Getty. Did you do Lee Getty yet? No. Did you ask him if he ever drove the General Lee? That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. I bet. I bet. Oh, Lee Iacocca. Lee Iacocca is a good one, too. I, you know what? As many times as we've talked to Governor Bill Lee, I, I bet it never gets old for him. I bet it never gets old for him, Bell. Maybe that's why we've had trouble getting him on lately. <laughs> Maybe that's why he pretended not to be able to hear us the last time that we had him I'm on. I'm done phone. with these fools. Idiots. So uh, anyway, Governor Bill Lee will be on with us Monday, April 1. No fooling. Uh, at uh, 2 o'clock or just after 2 o'clock. And we are hopeful. I'm working on it. We're hopeful to have him in studio. Very excited about that. John, hang in there. We'll get to you on the Covenant School matter coming up in just a moment. As we continue, it's 1232. Libertarian Lunch on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN. We are being updated. Uh, can you, are you on the same channel? Can you jip some of this? Join in progress. We're getting updated by. What channel are you on? I'm on, uh, on I'm on the CNN machine over here. But officials are giving an update on the Boston Bridge collapse. Why did you just change? You just changed my channel. I don't know why you changed my channel. It was you said it was on. No, you your remote changes my channel. Right, and it should have changed it to CNN. And, and went to went to some government affairs program over here. I got it. Um, and the uh, bridge is in Baltimore. Did I, what did I say? Boston. Oh, did I? Yeah. Well, that shows what I know. Baltimore. Pete Buttigieg probably knows Baltimore from Boston. Let's see what he has to say. For as long as it takes, and we will work with Congress to deliver on that. I'll end with this. For the families of those presumed lost, uh, for the people of Baltimore who are going to be feeling this closure in day-to-day -day life, and for everyone affected by the port closure and its supply chain impacts, the president and the whole government will be here with you until everything is rebuilt stronger than ever. That's not a flex. Our country put its arms around Florida when the Sunshine Skyway Bridge collapsed in 1980. America rallied around Minnesota after the bridge there collapsed in 2007. This will be a long and difficult path, but we will come together around Baltimore and we will rebuild together. Admiral? Well, there you go. I, I have a question. Did you see the tweet yesterday where, um, what's the dementia guy's name? Biden. <laughs> uh, where Biden uh, said that the federal government was dedicated to paying for the entire repair and restoration of the bridge. You told me that yesterday, and I, I don't understand why he said that. Why would the insurance company for the shipping company not be paying for it? Why is it our money that he's promising up front? Well, immediately that was my reaction when you mentioned this. You said Joe Biden just announced that the federal government is fully prepared to pay for the entire reconstruction of the bridge. And while I understand that it's a federal, you know, it's an interstate highway, technically. Not technically, it's an interstate highway. And so there, there are some federal government funds that might be utilized in order to facilitate this as, quif as swiftly as possible. For the life of me, I don't understand why would, would we not be going... We need to ascertain what the hell happened and figure out if the shipping company is liable. And if the shipping company is liable, go after the shipping company to repair the bridge. Isn't that the way that it works? Why are they automatically coming after my wallet? Well, and, and to not, not even necessarily in terms of liability. It was an accident, obviously. So why would they not be responsible for repairing the damages caused by the accident? Makes no sense to me. Now, you say it an accident, obviously, and look, I understand that there's some conspiracy theory out there as to Well, okay, exactly it was an accident happened. caused by Al-Qaeda. Well, right, sure. Sorry about that. Yeah, right. But no, I get what you're... No, I, I'm right there with you. For the light... I mean, it's like the, the federal government considers itself just a, a magic eight ball. And anything you need, you can just shake up the eight ball and you'll get it if you shake it up enough time. I mean, it just... They pretend like this money is just piles of it just sitting around because for them it is they know they'll be dead by the time we have to pay the piper sadly well he just, anytime he needs something he just calls up janet yelling and goes hey can you print me a couple trillion yeah, give me some money give me some money and if they won't do it in congress i'll executive order the crap to death in the meantime john's calling from nashville wants to talk about the covenant school situation hey john i'm glad you called good afternoon uh, hey i'm just um Appreciate everybody to pray for the families of the Covenant School and the souls that were lost and pray that that doesn't happen again. Um, and I agree that the pharmaceutical companies and the doctors that are pumping all these drugs into our young people are what causes 90 percent or more of this i was told from a very young age from my grandfather who was a world war ii veteran son never use drugs never drink alcohol and never get a tattoo i adhered to that up until the age i was 22 years old and um what kind of tattoo did you get 
That's a joke. That's a joke. I didn't get a tattoo. I, I smoked a joint at 22 years old. First, I drank a beer at 21. And that, the euphoria and the sex um, made me feel good for until the next morning. Same way with the marijuana. It made me feel good until I needed more to get that same feeling. That led to a 30-year opiate addiction during the um, Sackler families. Oh, wow. Come out with the um, Oxycontin, which eventually led me to seek heroin and other drugs on the street. I've overdosed approximately nine times, and I still battle with the opioids today. Wow. And that in itself, should I have listened and obeyed my grandfather, I would be in a completely different situation. Because up until that time, I was a happy kid. I took fishing trips with my grandfather, dad, grand, other grandfather. And from the time I was using drugs, I was ashamed that I went against him and didn't go around him, and that created distance between the family and the values that I could have learned. So I believe these drugs that are started at a very young age starts depleting our trust in God and our value system that's learned at the kitchen table from the time we're old enough to learn until we start that dark path. How are how are you do how are you doing now, John? Um, I can make it a month sometimes. The brain is an amazing thing. There's a doctor, um, Charles Lee at Meharry Medical Center here in Nashville that explains the brain and its bioplasticity. Once you use those drugs, it starts to change the chemistry of the brain and the structure of the brain. And uh, uh, so that's a, another conversation for a long, long day. Yeah, I don't, and I don't have time for it right now, John. I, I just, right. I, don't, I don't mean to and, rush you, but. But yeah, but, you know, once that is changed, when you get that impulse to go back, can I give you some? I mean, John, I don't mean to rush you, but I yeah. we're kind of bogging down just a little bit. But here, here, here's what advice I would give you from my grandfather, who is the finest human being that I've ever known to walk the earth. My grandfather told me that if a man wants to do something, he will. It's just that simple. If you want to stay off drugs, you can. You can do it, John. I believe in you. If you want to stay off the, don't make excuses. Just do it. Uh, I appreciate that. I need. I, if I a man afraid. wants to do something, a man will, and a woman, but that's the way my grandpa put it. So I, I love you, and I appreciate you, and I wish you the best, John, in your journey. I understand addiction. I understand how addictive some of these substances can be. You know what the biggest great gateway drug in the world is? Being born, and being born is also the greatest certainty for death in the world. And between those two events, you have the power to chart the course of your own destiny. And I believe in you, John. I believe you can do it. 615-737-9986. I mean, but I understand the lure of psychotropic drugs. I understand the lure of of alcohol or tobacco or, I mean, I get it. Don't get me wrong. We all want to find something that will make us feel better. Alleviate some of the burdens of the world. John, I'm, I'm not dismissive of your plight. But I will tell you that my, my grandfather taught me 
And my, my mother taught me and my grand, they taught me in different ways, but they taught me the same message. That while there are always things in this world that will come upon you and fall in your lap unbeknownst to you, you know, a car accident or a tornado or whatever it might be that you have no control over. You control how you react to it and you control the days that you control you. If you look in the mirror and recognize that where you have come from in your life and where you are going in your life is up to the person looking back at you at the mirror, while that is not true 100% of the time, it is true that 100% of the time that attitude is going to get you a hell of a lot further than making excuses. And I'm not saying you're making excuses, John. I'm just telling you. We all have shortcomings. I have shortcomings in my life. I have failures in my life. We all do. But believe in yourself and believe in your ability to overcome some of those failures, and you will overcome them. Phil writes in and says, concerning the bridge collapse in Baltimore, there were two survivors. One was seriously injured, went to the hospital. The other one went home. My question is, why did they release the man and where is he now? I don't know, Phil. I don't know the answer to that question. I, I did see last night where one individual was released uninjured. Um, I mean, why, why wouldn't they release the man? I mean, Phil, are you suggesting that perhaps he had something to do with the bridge collapse? I think they were filling potholes on the bridge at the time that the bridge collapsed. Yeah, actually, I didn't realize this till I, I read it last night, that apparently they had stopped all, all traffic and the only people that were on it were actually uh, city workers filling potholes. Well, what I believe happened, and if you watch their surveillance video from two nights ago at about 1.30 in the morning, you see traffic streaming by. Yeah, you back see and cars forth. and trucks. What they did was they alerted, I mean, apparently there's someone monitoring that bridge or there's some ability that they have to fairly quickly shut traffic down. And what I was, I mean, at least this is the way that I read it, that once the captain of the ship declared a mayday, about 20 or so, maybe 30 seconds before he actually hit the bridge. He declared mayday, and at that moment, they began the process of trying to shut down the bridge and that the workers who were filling the potholes assisted in helping them stop the traffic on the bridge, which subsequently saved a lot of lives because if they're, obviously if there were cars going across the bridge, they would have right into the water. Did you see the, the picture of the, the ship on the, uh, on the piling from the sky? I don't think, well, maybe. I mean, you look at the bridge and by itself, it just, okay, it's a bridge. But then you s compare it to the ship and you realize a ship's huge. how far it was from that bridge down to the water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No no question. Because that, that is a huge ship. Yeah. It's very, very tall, very, very long, almost a thousand feet long. I mean, these are huge shipping vessels. For and shipping that containers. literally would have fit under the bridge. Yes, Oh, yeah, with a lot of room to spare. I think it was 185 feet, uh, the distance between the water and the base of the bridge. I believe that's correct. Pete Buttigieg continues to give us an update, Transportation Secretary. I don't want to bore you with that, so we'll we'll avoid that at all costs. Kathy, or I'm sorry, Katie is next in Lewisburg. Hey, Katie, how are you? Hey, I'm great. How are y'all doing? Doing well, thank you. Listen, I've got a message for Todd Warner. I'm down here polling uh, the citizens of Lewisburg on what their feelings are on the school choice bill. And I've been down here for, this is my third time down here. And I've only talked to two people that were against it. Everybody else wants the bill. So I don't know where he's getting his information. I heard him say earlier, well, uh, I promised the principals and the teachers, well, what about the people? Don't they count? Uh, they should. They should. That's what I'm thinking. And, I mean, there's more to, there's more to Lewisburg than the teachers, and they say, you say that the money's going to the school and all of that. Well, don't the parents have a better say-so and a better knowledge of what to do with their money than the school? Well, I mean, and, and that's the ultimate debate. I mean, sadly, this thing has been, the debate has been perverted to a certain degree. And, and since you mention it, I'm going to reflect on our conversation with Todd Warner coming up in just a moment. So, uh, Katie, keep listening. I, I agree with you completely. I, I think the voice of the people needs to be heard. And the way that your voice gets heard, 
who, whomever your representative might be, give them a call. Whoever your senator might be, give them a call and let them know what you value and what you want them to do. This is a big deal. And a lot of red states are doing this. A lot of purple states are giving parents more control of their child's education, giving them more of those tools in that child's educational toolbox to make the best decisions unencumbered by financial inability. That's what it's all about. The rest, details. Sadly, some of my purity conservative friends have decided that this isn't good because, oh, the government will get itself involved in private education. The government is already involved in private education, people. Come on. They set standards already. I mean, I understand that that some of you, I mean, some of the folks out there is, oh, wow, this is a camel's nose under the tent. Well, look, I understand that fear, and it is up to us to prevent the government from encroaching on the private educational system. You are talking to someone who questions whether the government should be involved in the education of your children at all. At all. So I, I'm right there with you. I'll have more to say on Representative Warner, who was invited on the show today, as was Phil Williams. And neither of them returned my encouragement request for invitation as expected if you missed our interview with representative todd warner in the two o'clock hour yesterday it's absolutely delicious and you're invited to check it out on supertalk 99.7's website 99.7 wtn.com 99.7 wtn.com 52 after the hour
One hour down, the Libertarian Lunch in the books. We've got two more to go on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. When we return, there was a United Nations vote regarding Israel and a ceasefire. I do not believe the United States of America needs to engage militarily or have boots on the ground in the Gaza Strip or anywhere in Israel for any purpose. But I do believe the United States of America best use its muscle to protect Israel in the worldwide community. We'll talk about that next. We'll talk about school choice. We'll continue to reflect on the year that it has been since the coveted school shooting. It's all to come. Two more hours to go. Murphy Show, Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
been telling you for a minute or two about Savory Spice. I'm so pleased to talk about this locally owned business that do they do great work. I mean, Holly and David, they have two locations to serve you. If you are thinking about restocking for the kitchen, uh, perhaps you're thinking about getting better in the kitchen. Uh, maybe you're looking for a gift for someone that you know loves being around the kitchen. Well, Savory Spice is your place. Uh, two locations to serve. One, L&L Market on Charlotte Pike. The other's in Franklin, just off the square. Holly and David are ready to serve you. Whatever your level of expertise regarding the kitchen if you need an exotic spice that you can't find anywhere else an international spice or a salt or a flavoring they have those uh you know uh they they present different spices new spices and spices you can't get anywhere else uh for the cook in your life it is a must go for uh, gift ideas plus they can restock the shelves that you have uh and, and they're available for you every single day just go by and see them tell them Matt murphy sent you to the one and only savory spice i like to say you up your food game by upping your spice game you up your spice game with the one and only Savory Spice. I love it when liberals get hoisted by their own petard. We will discuss one liberal getting hoisted himself in just a moment on the Matt Murphy Radio Show. Liberal on liberal violence. There's nothing like it. It is 105. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Glad to have you with us on this a Wednesday edition. It is March 27th. It's a somber day as we remember the Covenant School shooting from one year ago today. Uh, very in incredibly sad where six people lost their lives and sad that we've not learned more about the impetus of the shooting, why it occurred, and what we potentially can do to prevent it. Sadly, uh, there are some that marched into the corner of gun control as the only answer, the singular and only answer. Uh, others are suggesting that mental health would be a good topic of discussion. People like myself would suggest to you that we need to talk about the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical industry and the overprescription of pharmaceutical drugs and psychotropic drugs specifically that potentially could lead to this if you want to look at linkage between all of these mass shootings in the united states of america i'm not suggesting to you that it is a it is a linear progression or it's a single line or there's there's something that links every single one of these cases i am suggesting that no one has ever really done an exploratory piece of research on it oh we explore the gun statistics on the regular but have we explored what the pharmaceutical industry is doing to overprescription or over-medicate our children, our teenagers, our young adults? 615-737-9986 is our telephone number, 615-737-WWTN. We'll get to David real quick, and then I want to get to a recap of the Todd Warner situation. Just, you know, it's really simply, if you're a poli it's simple. Regardless of your political stripe, if you're a politician, just don't lie. More on that in a moment. David's in Lewisburg. David... Thank you for your call. Wanted to get to you on school choice. How are you? Pretty good. I do live in Marshall County, and I just wanted to respond to the lady that called that said she was polling people in Lewisburg and had only found two people that said they were against it. She hadn't been to my place. <laughs> I don't know where she's polling or who's paying her to do that or where she's coming from, but Representative Warner listens to the voters that attend the meetings within the 92nd district that, that he faithfully attends. I personally potentially stand to gain $28,000 from the private school intrusion subsidy that's being proposed, but I've asked Representative Warner to maintain his constitutionally conservative stand on this issue. And let me say this, all this Republican establishment swamp pack money and organizations, they're now just showing their true colors by attacking a man whom just a few months ago they were praising and holding up as one of the most conservative lawmakers in the state all over one vote of conscience. It's typical swamp politics that the Republican leadership is engaging in. You either bow to our will or we'll kill you, we'll primary you, we'll run money against you. And that's what they're doing to a good man who's taken a vote of conscience. And they're saying he's standing in the way of it. He was a one no vote on a subcommittee that voted six to two to pass the bill on. He was one of the two no votes. So how did he block it? How did he hold it up? He just voted his conscience, and now they're trying to kill him. Typical swamp politics. That's what we have in Tennessee, a supermajority of establishment swamp politicians in leadership. 
David, um, thank you for calling. Thank you for presenting a, a robust defense of Todd Warner's position on the issue. Uh, so how is this supposed to work then? Meaning, if there are citizens in Marshall County that are of a like mind, like yourself, that want to support Todd Warner, that's great. If there are similar individuals that get together and want to push back and perhaps run someone against him, and that's what America's all about, right? Sure. Not okay. saying they couldn't or shouldn't do it, but I'm saying they're smearing him and trying to... Who's, the, who's, who's, Joe smear, who's, who's he, he smearing Joe him? Joe Biden against... Well, it's the, uh, the was it America? The prosperity was Americans for prosperity. I'm, how how did sure they? How did they? Him. How did they smear him? They're mailing out mailers and sending me text messages saying that Todd Warner is standing with Joe Biden against school choice, and he's the he was with the Democrats, and they're they're smearing a man that just a few months ago they were saying was well, one I mean, of the top five conservative lawmakers in the state. Well, I'm not here to defend AFP. They can defend themselves. That's not what I'm all about. Um, but I mean, if they're saying that he and Joe Biden agree that they are against school choice, then that's true. And I and just to classify just just as school choice, that's a broad brush to say he's a, he's against school choice. Oh. I don't think Todd Warner's against true school choice. He's against the government putting money in to the private school environment where the government can gain control. And gain, and well, gain, the government, uh, the government already, regulation. the government already regulates private schools. Right. Well, I mean, they do. Really I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not saying they should do it more. I, look, you're talking, David. You're talking to somebody that I question whether we should have public schools at all. Oh, I do as well. I do as well. I'm with you on that. Right. So if I and I don't have any kids, so I want to see some of my money coming back to me because I don't see where I'm getting any benefit out of public schools. Right. Public schools are and failing. Public schools are failing our kids. What I would like to see is something that gives parents a better ability to make certain choices for their children without a financial inability to do so. In other words, they're paying a lot of their money into our tax base. They're paying a lot of their money in sales taxes, a lot of their money in property taxes and other taxes that the government places on them. And they're not getting a lot of return in their public education system. And they don't have – many of these parents don't have the ability. So if, if we're just going to say, well, too bad for them, okay, that's fine. I mean, I, I, I guess we could say that. Or perhaps we could try to get the money back to the kid through the parent and give the parent a better ability to find better educational opportunities for their children. And, and I guess that's just – and look, I don't begrudge you your position on the issue. That's the debate that we're having is – whether or not we want to give parents more ability without regard for the financial inability to pay to get their kids in a better schooling situation. I'm not against it in principle. It's just the way that this is set up. We need to go back to the drawing board on it. What, 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 speci what specifically go. do you disagree with? I mean, I mean, I'm genuinely curious. I'm not trying to, you know, paint you into a corner. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely curious what about this legislation bothers you? It it bothers me that if any school, private school wants to participate in it or a homeschooler wants to participate in it, that it's going to come with a additional government required. For example, if I want to send my children to my private Christian school at my conservative church that I go to, then and if I want to accept that money or my school wants to accept that money, then, then the state will have say so over what curriculum they teach. We can't teach what we believe about gender. We can't teach what we believe about evolution and creation. Well, I don't see that we in the. I don't. I've read. I don't see that in the. I don't see that in the legislation. Where I don't see that. I've read it. I don't see. I mean, if if we look at what's happened in other states that have done this, that's what it eventually comes to. Do you well, tell me but, that as a libertarian, small l libertarian, that you think government money? Every is going to come without strings attached. Every bit of what we do every day that what that I'm on this radio station is an effort to push back on government trying to encroach on our daily lives. That is a fact of life in American society. So I mean, it, to, toward your point though, David, uh, why don't we proactively push back against the entire concept of public education if that is true? and privatize education and use public education as merely a safety net in the same way that we use food stamps. 
hey, I'm 100% on board. Well, with that, we're, we're agreeing on that. We're not there. And that's not what this bill is proposing. This bill is, is in pushing us further and deeper into government encroachment into private education. It is forcing public education into more of a free market competitive model. And I'm again, and I'm for that principle. I am. Our public schools need to be forced in, into some competition. They need to up their ante. They they need to be pulled up to where the private schools are. But I don't believe this is the way to go about it. Well, I would encourage you to read the legislation because I don't see anything beyond beyond getting some basic third party receipts on testing which the state already does for private school i mean the, the state already accredits private schools right there's already an accreditation process so the argument that oh the state's going to get involved and going to continue to encroach upon the business of private schools well it does not further encroach in any way that it already has and it's up to us you david me matt the rest of us to make sure that that never happens to suggest that this might cause something to happen 15 or 20 years down the road and that's why we shouldn't do it? The logic of that argument doesn't doesn't work for me, especially considering the benefit of creating that competitive environment in the public education system. And hopefully the goal is, and it might not work, but the goal is to try to infuse competition within the public education system so that these teachers, these administrators, and these schools get better at what they're doing because they're, they're failing right now I, I agree with you on that and you and i may have to just respectfully disagree no, about good. whether this is the way to no, go about good. it or not but i but i do want to go on record as saying the attacks against Rep representative warner are unfair that he's voted his conscience he's voted what he believes is the strong constitutionally conservative position he's not caved to the swamp leadership pressure or the money pressure against him he's maintained his stand and for that they're attacking him and, and, and making unfair smears against him. I know the man personally, and, I, and I've disagreed with him before, and I've told him that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not shilling for Todd Warner here, but I'm saying they, it's wrong with it. They're using Democrat tactics to attack a good man, and I think it's going to come back on him. Well, I mean, they're using political tactics. I mean, but you know what? I, the purity conservatives that I hear screaming about Governor Bill Lee all the time, they do the same thing. I mean, you know, to, I mean, I, I'll just use this as an example. Um, I know organi the organizations that scream, I mean, and you kind of did it a little bit, David, and I'll let you do it. And that's fine. It's your position. But to, to suggest that some of the people up there that are promoting this are establishment or rhinos or not really conservatives, I mean, that, isn't that the same thing that, that, you, that you claim that you hate is happening to Warner? You're doing the same thing to Bill Lee. Well, first of all, I didn't mention anything about Bill Lee. I did mention the Republican. Yeah, Republicans but we, I mean, I know, it, I know what you meant. Come on, you know? I know what you meant. You know what you meant. But that, that's, why it, that's why it's said in behind closed doors, you'll never pass a bill. Nothing you ever propose will ever get voted for. You won't get any committee assignments if you don't vote the way we want you to vote. Uh, I, 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 don't think Todd, I don't think Todd. Vote. I don't think Todd Warner has been removed from committees. Here, here's my thing: I don't begrudge Todd, Todd Warner his position on it. Obviously, you agree with that position, and that's good. These types of discussions between you and me, David, I think these are positive for the people of the state of Tennessee, yeah. so that they can make decisions. Yeah. Here's what I don't like, Certainly. And, and this is, and and you might not like me saying this, but I'm gonna say it. Here's what I don't like: I don't like Todd Warner lying to me. And yesterday. He came on. He knows very well who recorded that recording. He knows very well how Phil Williams got it. And he sat here and just fudged and lied. And I just vote the way you need to vote, defend your vote, and great. And I don't have anything against Todd Warner. I don't know the man personally like you do. But don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. And that's what he did yesterday. And I don't like that. Well, I didn't hear yesterday's interview. I just heard just a few minutes ago you say that there was one, so I will go back and listen to it so I can't speak yesterday. Well, again. I mean, you know, he, I, I asked him about the recording of the conversation between he and Tori Venable because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't an illegally recorded conversation that was aired by Phil Williams, and he said he didn't record it and he couldn't remember who was in the room. And it was just, you know, just listen. I mean, once again, I don't, I don't have anything against the guy, and I don't have anything against this debate. I think it's very, very important to have this debate. Uh, but there are many people in this state that are never going to be satisfied with anything that is attempted with regard to public schools. And they'll always find a reason 
to be against some of this. And some of these same people, David, they were for it two or three years ago. And I just don't know what Todd and others mean when they talk about school choice. They say, I'm in favor of school choice, but I'm not in favor of this legislation. And I don't understand what they're talking about. I mean, the I, only I, way you think that someone can make a choice about what school their child goes to is to take $7,000 from the state and go take them to a private school? No, what I'm saying is that this is attempting to give parents who are already paying into the system through their tax dollars a few of those tax dollars back so that they have more financial flexibility to find a better educational opportunity for their children. That's what this scholarship fund is all about. Well, well that's, not, that's not a truthful picture of it as well. I, like I said, I have four children in school. That would be $28,000 for me. Matt, I, I earn well, but I guarantee you between all of my property taxes and all of my sales taxes, I don't spend anywhere close to $28,000 a year in state taxes. So I'm not just getting a little bit of my tax money back. That's sucking money from the system. That's a government subsidy and entitlement. It's classified in the bill as an entitlement that I'm getting from the state of Tennessee to educate my children. That's way more than the taxes I paid. To the, the amount of money is in direct correlation with the average that the state pays for per pupil learning in the public education system, minus the federal government, because that's fake money. So right. that, that's the right. average. That, you don't, you, you, you send, you, do you send your kids, uh, David, your kids are currently in, in public school? No, my kids are currently, currently homeschooled. All right. But they have also been in private school. So I have the option of doing both. Currently, well, we're choosing the homeschool. But didn't Representative Sapicki say when he was on your show that this is not taking any money out of the public school system? So it's not saying, OK, a public school X, Y, Z, you're failing. So these students want to leave. So yep. for every student that leaves you, we're going to take seven thousand dollars out of your budget and move it over to this private school. He said, no, the money, the money move, money the, the money moves. And then what he said was that the money would move in the next calendar year when the count would be. I mean, naturally, the count in, in, in any of these districts would be reduced and the money moves based on the number of pupils on a year to year basis. Uh, but you don't do that until the next school year. So. For example, if the count is already set and the budget's already set, let's say that one school system loses based on the scholarship, there's 20,000 total. So, you know, let's say a school system loses 500 kids. Well, the next calendar year, if they are down 500 kids within the count, then they're going to receive less money because they're getting that allocation of money based on the number of pupils they're teaching in part. So, I mean, okay, in, in, a, in a way, in a way, they're trying to have it both ways. And I think you're right. They're, they're trying to suggest that there's no money that is coming out of the educational system uh, because they want to blanch the Democrats' argument that we're stealing money from public education to pay for private school. So they don't want to they don't want to deal with that. So they're, they're having it a little both ways because they say, well, this is not money that's directly coming out of that system. But naturally, the system is going to be less funded when there are less children to fund in any given school systems. Does that make sense? It, it, it does, in a sense. And from what I understand, since we're required to register our homeschool children as being homeschooled in this county, from what I understand, the county receives that money from the state for our children being <clears throat> students within living within the county. So the, from what I understand, the public school system in our county gets that gets that money, the benefit of that money of our children living in our county, even though they're being homeschooled 100 percent at my expense. David, this is a great conversation. I'm sad that we have to end it. I've got to get to a break, but let, let's continue the conversation. You have um, you, you have de defended your man Todd Warner admirably, and listen to that. Listen to that conversation that we had, and I think you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, I definitely will. Thanks, David. I mean, good good call and good conversation. For those who claim that I can't disagree with someone without screaming and yelling at them, I present to you Exhibit A, David. Twenty two after the hour on Super Talk ninety nine seven. What? You didn't have to call him a duty head. Did I call him a duty head? No. No. Oh. You were very nice to him. I try to be. You know, it's a, you know, I'm telling you, it's my boy, it's my boy scout jacket. I mean, it's, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm Maybe we need to make sure that you wear that every day. I'm prepared to, I am prepared to take grandma across the street for coffee or tea or whatever. I mean, you know, let's go grandma. I'll walk you 
I'll walk you right over to the Just Love Shop across the way on Demumbrian. It's Super Talk 99.7 WTN. All right, friends, it's Matt Murphy, and it is Craft Body Scan. I love talking about these guys. I love what they do. Um, everything that I believe in with regard to preventative medicine and naturally occurring things on planet Earth that can help alleviate your issues, they believe in at Craft Body Scan, and they focus on the preventative medicine angle of all of this. Craft Body Scan uh, utilizes CT scan technology, modern 2024 technology right here in the city of Nashville and the surrounding communities to help you find out issues that are going on inside of you before you even know about them. Do you want peace of mind? I'm a little bit of a hypochondriac, so I went and did the full body scan. Absolutely loved it. Got my results back. Could not believe my lungs. I smoked for 17 years, but now 15 years later, my lungs have fully repaired themselves or they, they there's no sign of smoking anymore. My heart is a-okay as well. I love Having this peace of mind, and you will too. And right now, $149 for you and a spouse or you and a significant other, you and a loved one, you can go in for $149. This is like a $1,300 plus value each. You can get it for $149 at Craft Body Scan. Go to craftbodyscan.com, spell it with a C, craftbodyscan.com, or give them a call at 615-436-1000, 436-1000. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer, you close in as little as 21 days, no home inspections, no lock boxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Matt Murphy for Members Nutrition. I want to tell you about the Members Nutrition difference, and I want to encourage you to go over to the Members Nutrition website. Number one, they believe at Members Nutrition that they can sell vitamins and supplements at a lower cost point, and they're doing it every single day at MembersNutrition.com. Number two, they want to make these products right here in the United States of America, not from some overseas company, and they do that every single day. I encourage you to go to MembersNutrition.com. You'll get 50% off your purchase price at checkout, you don't have to put in any codes. Just go to membersnutrition.com. Once again, membersnutrition.com. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Manderson. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at CaliforniaClosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation.
Super Talk 99.7, WTN 128, almost 129. So am I right? I admit that I've not followed this story as much as some. I'm probably not the guy to really, really dive deep into the Sean Puffy Combs story. How many names? I mean, he's P. Diddy. P. Diddy. That's what his, that's what his official street name is now. P. Diddy. Yeah. Used but to be Puff Daddy. He used to be, right. He, he didn't have a lul in his name, does he? A no. lot of these rappers, they have no. a lul. Lul. Not little. Lil. No. Lil. 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 No T. Lil. Is he out of the country? To my knowledge, he is out of the country. I... The government can't do anything right. I mean, it seems that they can't do anything right. He has been accused of running a criminal racketeering enterprise that includes murder, sex trafficking, illegal firearms, and drug trafficking, and yet he is not in custody. His mansions in Los Angeles, Miami, and New York were stormed by heavily armed agents with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security Yes. Two days ago? Two days ago. Homeland Security investigation confirmed the raids to TMZ, and the agency said it executed law enforcement actions as an ongoing part of an investigation with assistance from Los Angeles, Miami, and local law enforcement partners. Yet, where's old Puff Daddy? No, no. No. Oh, P. Diddy. Yeah. Okay, pardon. He doesn't use P. Puff Daddy Oh, anymore. God forbid I use the wrong name. He's human. He's he's child trafficking, Bell. Well, you don't want to confuse the audience. That's true. So we'll maybe get into that coming up in just a moment. In the meantime, it's Greg's turn. Hey, Greg, how are you? Pretty good. How you doing, man? I'm great, Greg. Thank you for calling in. Uh, first time, or long time listener, first time caller. Glad you're here. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, so I want to talk about psychotropic drugs, and I, I come from it from a different perspective. I had a childhood trauma that I tried to deal with in my uh, 20s and 30s with excessive drinking, and it didn't work. Shocking, I know. So I uh, sought out help. And if it wasn't for psychotropic drugs, I could not be even. It's not that I'm a zombie, but I don't want the peaks and valleys that I was constantly going through. So I guess what I'm saying, and my mom had a chance to put me on drugs when I was a kid. She chose not to, and that could have kept me out of the military, so I'm grateful. But if it wasn't for those drugs, I wouldn't be alive today. So I'll shut up and listen and let you talk. So if not for the drugs, I mean, I here's what I would say, Greg. I mean, obviously, circumstances are different for every individual on, on the planet. I mean, we're all unique, and we all have our set of baggage, and we all have our own unique set of circumstances. I don't begrudge any man figuring out his best pass forward. Every... I believe that you own you, Greg. And okay. something that my father told me, my grandfather had the most, the best sayings, but this is something my dad told me one time because I was, I was struggling with some issues of my own. Um, and I, I, like you, turned to the bottle during my late 20s. And I was having a hard time rectifying wanting to cover it up with alcohol and at the same time dealing with some of these issues. And I was talking to my dad. And he said to me, Matt, and in this case, I would say, Greg, every man deserves to go to hell in his own fashion. Amen. And if that's what and, I try to get everybody to understand, but they think I'm being blasphemous when I say that. No, I mean, it, it, it's not blasphemy. I mean, it, what, what it tells us is this, that if we have the ability to choose heaven, and I'll use the religious terminology because it kind of continues the concept— if we have the free will and the ability to choose heaven in this society, then we also have the free will and ability to choose hell. And, exactly. and, and as long as you are not harming others, it's one of the reasons that I call myself a libertarian. I believe that you own you and you control your own fate. And if you choose to go down one path that you know is destructive, or even if it's unbeknownst to you that it's destructive, um, that is your choice. You are, you're a grown person that lives in a free society and you own you. Now, does that mean that you will not have hopefully a, a group of family and friends and people that love you, that try to get you back on the right way or the right path and try to guide you to a place that heals your heart or helps your heart and your mind and your soul? Well, obviously, I want you to be surrounded and bathed in love with those people. And I think that's why so many people turn toward 
faith uh, because that does, it, through God's grace, anything is possible. So all that to say, I don't begrudge you your journey one bit. I, I think each man's journey is his own. I just want your happiness. I, I want you to be as happy as possible while you're on this mortal coil. Well, thank you, Matt, and I wish you the same for you, brother. Absolutely, I brother. listen to you every single day, and I, I love what you do. If you sometimes uh, I disagree with you, well, that's but, okay. Yeah. I want to I want to say something just me and you, Greg, and I mean this okay. from the bottom of my heart. Uh, find me if you need me. I'm always here for you. Okay, I All appreciate right. it. Brother. Yes, sir. That's Have it. A good day. I mean it. Uh, One thirty-four. Super Talk ninety-nine-seven WTN. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Manderson. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at CaliforniaClosets.com. You hear the man? And reach the man out just for said near 80. The man said near 80 degrees. It's getting hot out there, and I've been telling you for a month or so that the time will come the when you will call home. Jeff Eddy in Efficient really Heating and Cooling, and I know that that time is nigh. Let's get him on the schedule. Let's get Jeff or one of his qualified certified technicians out to your home to maintenance that AC to make sure it's running as it should. We don't want any unfortunate breakdowns. We don't want it to break down in the middle of July when it's hot, hot, hot in the state of Tennessee. That's what you do when you call Efficient Heating and Cooling. Jeff comes out. He checks that thing. And, oh, by the way, I love this about him. He says, I'm not charging over 125 bucks, no matter how many units you have. On a residential maintenance call, it's never going over 125 Now, I would say a lot of times, and Jeff will tell you the same thing, it's less than that. If it's less than that, it is less than that. But it'll never be more than that for a maintenance call. Now, sometimes they find things, and Jeff will talk to you about those things that need repair. Or, in some rare circumstances, if it's time to replace, it's time to replace. If that's the case, they're a diamond contractor with Mitsubishi Electric. They're an elite pro partner with Ream. Give them a call today at 615-784-4424. 784-4424 for efficient heating and cooling. Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I'll get to the UN vote from a couple of days ago. It's a shame what this country is doing in terms of abandoning or turning our back on Israel. We'll discuss that. We'll discuss, um, you know, I want you to imagine something for me. And this thought occurs to me on a day where there's a lot of talk about gun control in the state of Tennessee. There's a lot, you know, you go to the Tennessee and go to some of these other leftist websites and you'll find the op-ed pieces about 
we've done nothing on gun control. We've done nothing to protect our children. And it's not true, but I mean, it's not true that we've done nothing to protect our children. There have been many suggestions. You've heard me, low these many months, talk about what a what a crime it is that we do not have police officers in middle schools in Nashville. But we don't. Elementary schools, I should say, not middle. I think it's a shame in this day and age that that's not happening. There's plenty going on, but if it doesn't have anything to do with gun control, then the political left would suggest to you that we're not doing anything. And then they're never really specific about what they want to do. The vast, 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 outside of some of these more headline-worthy mass shootings, the vast majority, Bell K is, um, is by no means the, uh, the smartest guy in the room i mean he is by he is not the sharpest tool in the shed bell k is not the brightest bulb on the tree friends you got a point oh i do i do i, I got caught up in that, some of that bell of all of the gun related murders in the united states of america how do most of them occur with what type of gun handgun handgun is correct suicide suicide's about half Half of the gun deaths are handgun-related suicides. The other are handgun-related murders. Long guns account for a minuscule portion of gun deaths in the United States of America on an annual basis. So when liberals talk about gun control or regulating guns or stopping the violence that happens on city streets, whether it be Nashville or Memphis, what they're really talking about is regulating and ultimately confiscating your guns. Now... It's a thought exercise, one that I believe important. Imagine everything going on in Joe Biden's America. And now imagine everything going on and, and everything. The invasion across the southern border. The illegal alien activity. The gang and crime related activity that has come with that the gang and crime-related activity that's happening in our major cities, the DAs, the George Soros-funded DAs that have descended upon major metropolitan areas and are refusing to prosecute crime. You know, the FBI came out and said crime statistics were down. Well, if you don't prosecute the crimes, crime statistics go down. You know, no bail in these Many of these leftist states, you know, there's, oh, we release them of their own recognizance. We believe in no bail in this state because that's mean and that's financially based or whatever. You look around our state in Nashville, there's crime. And obviously you try to, we try to abate that as best we can. In Memphis, crime is rampant. Car theft is rampant. You got squatting going on. I mean, in New York City, the, the illegal aliens have learned. They get a house. They find a house that there's nobody living in it. They break into the house. They change the locks. And then the police in New York won't do anything to them. Think about all of that going on. And look, America is still a wonderful place. And America continues to be the greatest country on God's green earth, even though Joe Biden has done his best to ruin it. And as always, when I say Joe Biden, I don't mean Joe Biden because I don't believe Joe Biden knows his butt from a hole in the ground. It's his people. Imagine for a moment all of this is going on and liberals had had their way on guns. Seriously. The natural conclusion of their argument is that you don't get to own a gun. You know, maybe they'll carve out some exceptions for sport shooting or shotguns like you see in some of these other leftist states. I'm talking about countries. Imagine if they had accomplished their goals on guns. They say, well, we need to get to the bottom of gun violence. And they talk about long guns and they talk about bump stocks and they talk about magazine capacities uh, that's just the beginning you think they're going to stop there <laughs> you, you you think they're going to continue to see 
the level of violence, not tackle the root cause of the violence, not ask ourselves why this violence is happening in the inner cities, what's the causal factors, who's behind it, what are the demographics, these types of things. Can't do that. Get accused of racism if you do that because of what the statistics show us. I'm asking you to imagine for a moment that Democrats had their way on the Second Amendment and imagine what life would be like when you had no ability to ultimately defend yourself outside of, you know, a baseball bat or a tire iron. Imagine Joe Biden's America with no guns. Imagine Joe Biden's America with no gun with only criminals. Because the criminals aren't going to abide by the laws. By their very nature, law-abiding citizens abide by the law. Criminals by their nature do not. That's what makes them criminals. They're not going to abide by any gun regulations. Come on. That's just me and you. Imagine for a moment that we live in a magical world where there are no, you have no Second Amendment rights. Do you think our country would be safer or not? Do you think that we would be better off or no? Why is it when they have these discussions about the limitations of firearms ownerships, ownership, excuse me, it's always about the citizen. There's never any discussion about limiting weapons of war on our streets by the government. Oh, no, no, no. The government's here to serve you, Bell. Up on a platter. Yeah. To the criminals. <laughs> no, you're right. Lindsay's in Pleasant Acres. Hello, Lindsay. Glad you called me. How are you? I'm well, Matt. Um, I have to ask you, is that my favorite cowboy shirt under that sweater? Uh, I believe it is, Lindsay. Thank you for noticing. That's right. That's my, my little cut, my little uh, whatever it is, my little That's camp my shirt. That's my favorite. Thank Does you. Does anybody still notice that poor Matt McMorry is counting down Chiefs clothes? I... I accused him of being disgusting today. I'm like, this is disgusting. We, I mean, Bell and I were talking to him before the show. I said, this is disgusting. We have to put an end to this. What are you doing? What, he's what on did day, he say? He's on day 30? He's on day 30, <laughs> and he and he can't rewear it. So it was the Chris Hand Mac Morey Challenge. For those who do not know, Mac Morey's beloved Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. And in the aftermath of the Super Bowl, Chris said, you know, we should, you should wear, you know, different Chiefs gear every day until you run out. He's not even gotten into socks or underwear yet, Lindsay. Or hats. Or hats. <laughs> and he's on day 30. I told him at su I told him today, I said, Maury, at some point, is this not embarrassing? And he goes, I don't know what to tell you. People just buy you. They find it. And it's true. You know, people find out that you like the Kansas City Chiefs or you like golf or you like this team or that team. And that's what they buy you. Uh, but, yeah, he's uh, I bet he's got another month in him, Lindsay. Good Lord. I told him we should all bet on it, and somebody win a free Chiefs hat from him. I would have taken the under and lost. I wanted to talk about Laura Logan real quick. All right. <laughs> um, I am confused. She is talking about a cyber attack. Is she talking about from a terrorist or from the deep state? Could you elaborate on what in the world her theory is? Because I'm getting mixed messages. Uh, yes, I can do that. Let me, uh, let me pull it up. Let me pull up her, uh, social media post on the X machine and I'll get into it right after we take a time out. How about that? Not good for that you? Was fair. I promise to do it. Bell, make me, uh, make me deliver on my promise. I don't want don't to tease. Don't lie to Lindsay. I'm trying not to. I'll deliver on the promise. Also, did you see what John Stewart had to say about Donald Trump and the quote unquote victimless crime that happened in New York? This about him selling his townhouse uh -huh. or his apartment. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've got the uh, I've got the shot and then the chaser on that coming up as well. Plus more of your telephone calls at 615-737-9986. It's 48 after the hour on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
All right, friends, let's talk about Mark, my buddy at the safe house and what he has to offer you. You know, we don't have a border wall on the southern border, but you could have a literal wall between your valuables and the criminals that want to steal said valuables. Thank you to Mark and Nashville's safe house. They have more safes than I mean, it's just it, it's impressive. I mean, you walk in Fourth Avenue South. Um, Nashville safe house. Uh, they have safes and vault doors and that's what they do. They, they do storm shelters too. Uh, but safes, vault doors, storm shelters, and that's it. They don't, they don't sell other furniture. They don't sell all of these other things. Uh, and they focus laser like on these safes, these vaults, the ability to protect that, which protects your loved ones with the gun safes that they have, or your valuables, like your jewelry, your important papers and documents. That's what Mark does in Nashville Safe House. We don't have a southern butter wall, but you can have a wall in your home. You can protect yourself and your family. Thank you to Mark in the Safe House. Remember, gun safes are sales tax free at Nashville Safe House, and there are rebates galore going on through the month of March. Go by and see him today, 4th Avenue South, or go to NashvilleSafeHouse.com. That's NashvilleSafeHouse.com. Don't forget, they don't let some third party crackhead or whatnot deliver your safe. Their professionals do it for you at Nashville Safe House. Go to NashvilleSafeHouse.com.
What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Manderson. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at CaliforniaClosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation. Super Talk 99.7 WT and 155. Matt Murphy and you. Man, oh man, one more hour to go. I think Cameron Smith's stopping by. He was here yesterday filling in for the vacationing Chris Hand. Chris back today, obviously, from 9 until noon. Brian Wilson coming up from 3 until 7. It's live, it's local, it's information-fueled and opinion-driven on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I told Cameron that you had kind of given him what for on the air Monday, and he was like... That man and I are going to have words. Yeah, we'll have words, all right. Yeah, I mean, you know, establishment, establishment Cameron. Just go along to get along. They'll do it next time. They Cam promise. Cameron Romney. That's what they call him. That's what they call him. I don't call him that. That's what they call him. I promised um, I promised Lindsay that I would get to the Laura Logan. I'm going to get to that before the top of the hour, but Andrew's sitting by. Andrew, thank you for your call. How are you? Hey, good afternoon, uh, I'm blessed. Thank you for having me on, man. Well, it's my pleasure. Uh, What's on your mind? Oh, sweet. Well, you know, I'm an I'm a native Nashvilleian, Matt, and um, my name is Andrew Toll. By the way, you know, I'm a native Nashvilleian. I love this city, and I'm a Christian conservative. I totally agree with what you said about how the narrative and the fallout of what happened a year ago at Covenant School has been dominated by the idea of gun control and there's some merit to that idea there's been some wacky bills proposed in the tga the last three years about guns and and i think more can be done but you know it's not a gun issue and you know that and i know that any thinking person knows that any person with any level of discernment and wisdom knows this is an issue of evil and of of human evil and there's a really interesting spiritual Cord, and, and I'm a writer, so I use some creative language here, Matt. But there's a really strong spiritual cord that led to the Covenant shooting, and and, and, and this is crazy, you know. And I'm I'm going to ask you a question and let you talk in just a second. But what is, and you know, I'm not suicidal, but this is some crazy information that God has showed me, and I'm I'm blessed, and I, I pray for the Lord's blessing as I share this. Here it is, Matt. The shooting happened at Covenant Presbyterian School. And what is one of the first covenants in the Bible? It's the rainbow. And God gave us the rainbow after he flooded the earth, after the earth 
had become corrupted in its flesh. All of mankind had become corrupted in its flesh. And we can imagine what that means pretty easily. Things of a fleshly, carnal, sexual nature. And people were worshiping false gods. We see this throughout the Old Testament. And we know that that people were committing child sacrifice to false gods. And we know that that's why God dealt so harshly with the evil peoples on the earth. And God is good and holy, but he deals harshly with, with evil people who worship false gods. But the very first covenant we see, Matt, is the rainbow. And who hijacked the rainbow? It's the LGBTQ ideological establishment has hijacked the rainbow. And God gave us the rainbow as a covenant after he flooded the earth, after both mankind became corrupt in his flesh and was violent toward one another. But what does this tell us about the nature of this kind of violence and this depravity? Andrew, I got to get to a point, buddy. I'm, yeah, I'm sure. sorry, but I do. I got to get to a point. John. Yeah, you go ahead. No, no, no. I'm asking you. What's your point? Oh, well, I'll head it home here, Matt. The Covenant School shooting comes from a thread of sexual perversion that was being fought since 2022. Uh, all right, hold on. All right, Andrew, you're not going to get to it. I'm going to give you one more crack at it because I'm, I'm because I have my Boy Scout coat on today. It's Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Matt Murphy for Members Nutrition. I want to tell you about the Members Nutrition difference, and I want to encourage you to go over to the Members Nutrition website. Number one, they believe at Members Nutrition that they can sell vitamins and supplements at a lower cost point, and they're doing it every single day at membersnutrition.com. Number two, they want to make these products right here in the United States of America, not from some overseas company, and they do that every single day. I encourage you to go to membersnutrition.com. You'll get 50% off your purchase price at checkout, you don't have to put in any codes. Just go to membersnutrition.com. Once again, membersnutrition.com. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer, you close in as little as 21 days, no home inspections, no lockboxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing.
Hey, friends, it's Matt Murphy, and I want to talk about Pat Davis. Who is Pat Davis, you ask? He is your health plan man. He is my health plan man. But the website is yourhealthplanman.com. That's yourhealthplanman.com. Let's talk about what he does. Now, you're thinking, Murphy, it's March, almost April. Why are you talking about health coverage right now? I can't do anything about my health coverage if I want to. Not so, says Pat Davis. He can shop amongst all the insurance companies. He is your insurance concierge, if you will. And their freedom of choice plan allows you to pick your doctors. It's 30 to 60% lower than even Obamacare. The monthly premium is independent of your income. No surprise tax bills at the end of the year. If you pay for your own health insurance, if you're uninsured, if you're on COBRA, or if you're on your employer coverage and it's too expensive, there are options for you. If you qualify, they can get you switched. Yourhealthplanman.com for more information, or better yet, call Pat and his team today. 855-475-2662. That's 855-4-PLAN-MAN. You spell it out, and you'll call it. They will design a plan that is managed by you, not by the government, uh, because that never ends well. It's yourhealthplanman.com. Call Pat Davis and his team today. All right, here we are. Here we go. Hour number three of the Matt Murphy Show starts right now. It's 2.05. Glad to have you with us. Super Talk 99.7 WTN. So, uh, Andrew hung up. I don't know. Andrew, you're welcome to call back. I was going to give you one last shout out on it. Andrew says uh, he was making, you know, it's the anniversary of Covenant. And would you, would you, have, do you have him up yet? Would you stop? Would you stop? You come in here and like a 14-year-old, it's like you hang around with 14-year-olds or 13-year-olds or 12-year-olds all the time. Yes, yes, yes. That's Dan Mandis' throat coat. I can't. I know. And yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't do this to me. Don't I'm trying to be serious. Dude, and, let's and, do serious and right you're, here. Come and on. you're being 13. <laughs> well, no. And Cameron Smith, I called Cameron today and I say, hey, are you coming in? And he goes, no, I'm coming in on Friday for you. And I was like, no, I'm not out this Friday. I'm out two Fridays from now. Mm. Uh, and so there you go. And I said, you're welcome to come in, even though you were in yesterday. You're normally here on Wednesdays and I want to yell and scream at you. Yeah. And I sat down and, and there's, there's just but hold it up for those of you watching on Super Talk TV. Oh, just my look at goodness. This. Look at that. There's just look at that. I mean, what is this? Hat, 20 those are mandis's it's uh let me see it's organic <laughs> you say it go ahead it's, tell tell the audience what is sitting in front of me there is a pile on the in the studio of super talk 997 wtn there is a pile of packages on the desk that is traditional medicinal organic throat coat Somebody in marketing somewhere should probably be drawn and quartered. Like, come on, man. They, they're they not, no. They're, they don't have 13-year-olds sitting in the boardroom with them, giggling in the corner. I can't stop. I'm sorry. Continue. Serious. No, no, no. Let, don't, don't make me laugh. I'm going to read this, and I, I'm i going to read this. Mm. Try not to laugh, Cameron. You ready? I'll do my best. <clears throat> Organic throat coat. Original... With slippery, <laughs> with slippery elm. I'm sorry, I can't. And, and 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 how many are there? They're like thirty packages of this. Right. I want. Look, it says. I mean, how much? Dan Dan Mandis, Nashville's Morning News. This is his because I asked Dan. I said, "Is this yours?" He said, "No, that's not mine. This is Dan Mandis's." It supports Dude, throat health, I guess. How much throat coating do you need on a regular basis that you have 30 or 40 packages of this stuff available? Talking on the radio is hard. It, it stresses it's the true. vocal cords. I get it's it. It's true. I'm crying now a little. <laughs> you want to know You want to know how to enjoy the throat coat? <laughs> you, you're going to tell me. I'm sorry. I was talking to somebody about having some delicious tea earlier. This next, this, I'm, I'm sorry. It has, it has the term tea bag in it. I can't. I can't. 
<laughs> just just read the third instruction. I'm not going to read I'm the third sorry. instruction. This is, this is radio. We're gonna Squeeze be- and remove tea bag to ensure maximum goodness. <laughs> Bell's like, what are y'all doing? I am so... It did. I am so, <clears throat> so sorry <clears throat> for Cameron Smith. He will be punished. <laughs> Scoriated. I have nothing to do with this. Isn't that what Phil My said goodness. you did to they, that representative? You excoriated him? I did. I excoriated oh. him. I had to look it up. Yeah. It, this this says it's, it's good with honey. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't even I don't even know anybody named Honey. That's, that's stop. Okay, I will. You did it. I just said okay. That anyway, on. so um, let's get Welcome. back to let's get back to more serious. Uh, Cameron bought the yeah, eighty two twelve. Did Cameron bring edibles? Yeah, I think he did. Apparently, John, sorry. Uh, because this thing went off the rails pretty quickly. Uh, good to have you with us. Yes, thank you for being here. here. Uh, real quick, I want to finish up on this. Real, real, real quick. Seventy seven fifty four. Yes, you're probably correct. Seventy seven forty uh, fifty four says we're all fired. The Members Nutrition Super Text Line. So, um, Andrew called, and it it is the anniversary of Covenant, and he had this um, interesting theory about the first Covenant involving the rainbow, and somehow that correlates to the LGBTQ. I I don't know where you were going. I was trying to get you to get to the point, and that's why I held you over, Andrew, and you hung up on me. So, if you want to call us back, um, that's all good. I don't really understand where you were going. Um, and if you want to call us and let us know where you were going, so be it. In the meantime, we've got Cameron to argue with regarding how to handle, you know, I don't think we're really having an argument about this. Now I referenced the article from the Tennessee and let's back up for a moment and talk about it. So if you missed it, and I don't know how you did, if you follow politics, uh, the Republican majority in the house of representatives got this omnibus spending package through. It's like a one, a $1.2 trillion thing. Uh, mm-hmm. That's going to get us through the end of the fiscal year. They wanted to get it off their plate. They got it off their plate. Senate passed it. Right. Biden signed it. Um, it frustrated a lot of people. It frustrated a lot of conservatives. They had to have a lot of Democrats vote for this. About thing. 100 Republicans didn't vote for it. And about 100. No Republicans in the House of Representatives, to my knowledge, voted for it in Tennessee. I don't think. I don't think in Tennessee. I don't either. So it frustrated people with Mike Johnson that he would do this. It frustrated me. Sure. Understandable. And it frustrated Marjorie Taylor Greene. And I believe, and I understand your point, and I agree largely with the point that it does us no good to play these games about, oh, I'm going to demand a vote and motion to vacate right, right. and we're going to get rid of you. But I think she knows that, which is why she didn't demand privilege. Fair. Right? If she had if she had demanded a privilege motion to vacate, that means it had to happen within, what, 48 hours? Two legislative days. Yeah. But she didn't do that. So I, I well, think they were she's going into doing... a recess, and she has been clear in my article. I quote her. I mean, she said, "We need to decide who the next speaker is," and which indicates to me, she's going to force this vote at some point. I think she did not want to, you know, create this chaos of a privilege resolution right before a recess. But I, look, I get the frustration. At no point would I argue with anybody that. We're in fine fiscal health. I mean, when I was filling in for Chris yesterday, we went through some of the numbers, and it's truly shocking the just garbage that's happening in Washington. And I think we need to get to a point where we're honest with the American people and say, okay, here's our budget. We're going to cut $500 billion this year, $500 billion next year, or whatever the number is, and force, force the vote. I, I think right now, even on something like that, there's just not enough conservatives in Washington. And look, it's not the conservative Republicans that represent most of us that are the problem. It's the other guys. And so if you want to change that, you got to go win elections in places like Maine and Pennsylvania. I, th- there are so many Republicans in Washington, D.C. that do not demonstrate conservative values. I'm beginning to wonder if it's not them that should be pointing to us or those that and say, wait a minute, you're the rhinos. Yeah, it's split. If, it, if it's more of, the, of yeah. the, you know what I mean? It's split right? like, down it, the middle. The, 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 like the stalwart conservative base will point to people who are squishes and say, well, you're a rhino, Republican in name only. Well, there's so many of those guys and so few of us. 
why wouldn't they do the same thing? It's like the Spider Man. They're all right. everybody's pointing at everybody. Well, th this is where, and this is, it's hard to convey in a state like Tennessee where you have a lot of legitimate fiscal conservatives, right? Like folks that are saying, no, we don't want to do this crazy spending anymore. But when you're looking at half the Republican caucus in Washington, half was just like, okay, we got to do this. At, that's a, and, and frankly, it's probably more than half if folks didn't have the cover of the vote being done, right? So they could say, I'm against it, I'm against it, when they know the thing's going to pass, right? Mm -hmm. And so... When that, their vote's not needed, it's easier to exactly, take that stand. Right, and, and, and there are a lot of folks like that that they're like, yeah, I'm a conservative when it's easy. And the difficulty is we can talk to listeners in Tennessee and Kentucky and Alabama and say, hey, look, you know, rail against fiscal insolvency and silliness but it's the the problem is you got half the republican conference in other places that are like nah we're i'm kind of good with this so we're left with the same cycle over and over again yeah. and and i understand that shutdown politics typically benefits the democrats i don't care about the shutdown I don't, but I, they are able to use. What do you mean you don't care? Like it doesn't, doesn't bother. It you. does not affect me one bit. It's fine. It, it, I'm I'm certain that it affects some people that have involvement with government. I'm certain that it, you know, feels like it's going to impact people who are in the military, for example, or whatnot. They scare us a lot in saying, "Well, you're not going to get paid or whatever." They always get paid back. Yeah, it's it's pageant. So I, my beef with the shutdown politics is it's pageantry. I can show you historically, even in the 2018-19 shutdown, where it ends, then we do back pay because we don't want those families. Right. Blah blah blah. And so you're just giving them a paid vacation. A vacation. It is a paid vacation for, for bureaucrats, and folks are like, "Well, you should shut it down." I'm like, "Why?" We never do it long, very long. It's never very clear. You need people that ref that will actually vote to fund government in a way that pulls spending back. The people that are screaming, you need to shut it down, and I agree with them largely in their point. And I think the point sure. that they're making is Republicans can't – they can't get out of their own way and win these political chess matches. So – they claim, they argue as they go to Congress that they're physical conservatives. Yes. They argue that they want to do something about our national debt or at least our deficit from year to year. And they never do. Yeah, Even when they're in control, they don't. 75% of the House and Senate, I'm counting Democrats too, 75% of the House and Senate are basically cool with the status quo of radical deficit spending. But at realistically, at some point, that becomes a burden that will financially destruct the United States of America. I yeah. mean, we, I don't know. If, is it at $50 trillion? Is that at what point do we take it seriously? We're at $34.5 trillion right now. Let me put it this way, and this will give you a, a comparison. The debt service, net debt service we pay next year is going to be larger than the Department of Defense. But, but you get nothing. We got a majority in the House, and because Democrats say they're not going to play ball, the Republicans throw up their hands and acquiesce. It's like they don't really believe what's going to happen will happen. Well, it's the theory that it's not a problem until it is. I'm like, well, that doesn't even make any sense. You're telling me that we don't have a fiscal crisis until we can't borrow money anymore. And in a, you heard Biden say that you need to soak the rich, spend, spend, spend. Democrats are saying, I'm going to give out all the goodies to everybody for everything. And then Republicans, and I'm talking fiscal conservatives, like you, like me, are left sitting there saying, um, you need to eat your broccoli. And it's not a good political strategy. No, but I mean, I understand that the American people don't want to hear it. I get it. Uh, by the way, 52, 80, or 63, 52, 63. I don't know what, how you want me to pronounce it. I'm not saying physical. Physical has three syllables. I'm saying physical, F-I-S-C-A-L, physical. I don't know what you want me to do. I get accused of mispronouncing the word. It's not physical. I'm not saying physical. Well, I'm saying physical. I'm from the South, so I mispronounce a lot of stuff. It's great. <sighs> it's just frustrating. It's what I do. And it's frustrating. We're focusing on that. Matt needs to have a piece of paper in front of him so he can write down all of his teases and then get to them talk about someone having ADD. You're right. I, I do. Guess I, what? I, I owe you Laurel. Laurel. Well, Bell didn't do it. You have a piece of paper do, in front actually. of you. I do. It has all your stories That's on it. That's true. I also have this thing that says organic throat coat. Stop it. Original 
with slippery elm. I have DAD. It's different. Pour pour eight ounces freshly boiled water over one tea bag. Cover and steep for fifteen to ten or ten to fifteen minutes. Remove and uh, squeeze and remove tea bag to ensure maximum goodness. The maximum goodness is just real hard for me not to respond. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, what do you believe? I in my promise. Um, we're going to get back to this physical conversation. Um, and I love you too, fifty two sixty three. Thank you. God bless you. I know. I know. I I I'm, I get sloppy. I want to get back to it. But what do you believe happened in the Baltimore Harbor? That a boat crashed into a bridge. Everything's a conspiracy theory now. But it was it was Cameron. Cameron. It was driven by Al Qaeda. You don't understand. Well, I was trying to figure out whether it was climate change or immigration that caused it. But then actually looking at it, I looked like the power went out on the boat. Because the harbor pilots that that drive these things mm-hmm. are the best of the best of the best. Um, so a caller in the previous hour begged of me to, uh, well, tell her and the audience by extension what Laura Logan's theory is. Do you know who Laura Logan is? No idea. Journalist. Um, she wasn't Laura on CBS for a while, for a hot minute. I believe that's the case. Uh, she does a, a piece on online called The Rest of the Story. Anyway, Laura Logan says... Multiple intel sources, Baltimore Bridge collapse was, quote, absolutely brilliant strategic attack on U.S. critical infrastructure, most likely cyber, and our intel agencies know it. In information warfare terms, they just divided the U.S. along the Mason-Dixon line exactly like the Civil War. Okay. (laughs) Well, you know what's really cool is they had a Mayday call, and they could have disabled that, too, to make some more deaths happen, and they got the Mayday call in. I mean, come on. So, Laura Logan is presenting what she claims are multiple intelligence sources telling her that it was an attack, not an accident. Uh, It was planned, it was timed, and it was executed. Two critical components on that bridge are the two load-bearing pylons on each end closest to the shore. They're bigger, Mm. thicker, and deeper than anything else, yada, yada, yada. Half a mile of bridge went into the water, yada, yada, yada. Perfectly targeted attack, yada, yada, yada. Footage shows it's, it's it's a long thing on the X machine if you want to go read it. Um, here, here, here's what don't here's what I would say to Lindsay to your point. If you want me to seriously consider this, um, I am open to any and all information coming my way regarding the nature of what happened and how it happened. But not everything is a five alarm ar- alarm fire, and not everything is a hidden conspiracy theory. Do I believe the FBI? Nah. Sadly, the FBI has lost my trust. Much of the government's lost my trust. But that doesn't mean that the government's behind every little thing that happens in the world. Yes. Right? Well, and I, as somebody who's worked in the swamp, I can tell you that sometimes the competency is high. More often than not, it's low. And so for you to tell me this is an inside job or people have executed this at the highest levels of government, I've been there and no. I mean, it's just not as gifted and they and in this type of scenario this is this is awful this is silly but there's i mean i can name other critical infrastructure like the brent brent spence bridge in northern kentucky that crosses the river there and huge amounts of commerce go across it i mean there's any number of targets that folks could hit if they wanted to disable infrastructure and power grid all that stuff and Frankly, the folks that are responsible for those critical infrastructure pieces do a pretty good job of making sure that we're safe from those attacks. I mean, particularly the power power infrastructure. Well, I just fear, and I, I look, I love the idea of the democratization of information. Sure. I love the fact that anybody and everybody, but with that comes a certain level of peril and it also comes a certain level of responsibility. You have to have responsibility enough to just use the, the brain that God gave you, your own logic and reason and rationale, your life experience, and the information around you to assess every given situation. Does that mean you trust these organizations? No. Does that mean that they've lied to us in the past? Of course they have. Does that mean that, that I mean, this it, happened in does 2002. Does it mean that everyone has the same level of expertise? No. Right. And this is where the I get it, the do your own research. Well, I could do my own research, but do you want me to perform heart surgery on you? I can't. Probably I, not. I can't drive that boat. I could. I don't think I could drive that boat. Mm-mm. I think you would need to. 
do a lot of training to get me to drive a shipping boat. Yeah. And so I don't know why. So, you know, the, and so a lot of people are like, well, it turned. I mean, everybody became a shipping boat captain. Right. Right. Like so online. Well, it turned right. If, right into if, the if doing your own research is I looked at social media. I looked at the video and it turned right. So it had to be a terrorist attack. That's not that's not good. man. Well, if, if it was a terrorist attack, what an awful terrorist attack. Right. Terrorists attack people and kill people. Now, it is true that terrorists attack people and that governments attack installations. Government attacks infrastructure. I get that. But who? what government's attacking us? But this is so far... Let's assume the crazy conspiracy. Yeah. This is so far down the list of critical infrastructure. Yeah. It is to be like, uh, okay. I mean, it's not good that it completely fell into the water, but, but like... And if it's another government installation, they like... Right, so... So I'm just trying to work through the logic. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not trying to dismiss it uh, because I I understand that there's a lot it's of... It's fine to ask questions. It's fine to ask questions, and there's a lot of suspicion. I mean, I'm sorry, but the the, the, the advantage the government tried to take, the lies they told during COVID-19 and other... I mean, the lies they told surrounding Donald Trump and FBI surveillance and all these things, they matter. Why would another government try to harm the U.S. now if they love Biden so much? Yeah. Wouldn't they be doing everything to make sure that Biden gets real? This hurts Biden. But you can always twist it and say, you know what? Joe Biden came to the rescue and said the federal government's going to come in and quickly. You, you see yeah. what I'm saying? There's 40 a, chess. Once you reach We're your conclusion. We're playing 40, baby. Right. You just don't get it. You can just fill in the blank with whatever you need to get to the conclusion that you want. And, I, you know, I, I hate it when you're right on this subject matter because i remember for me the moment that the trust in government really started changing i never loved government but i at least had some confidence but it, what was the it was lowest learner it was the targeting of conservatives mm -hmm. with the irs yeah, yeah. and that was the first time because i had just left the hill and i was yeah. like wait a minute like you they said that you were targeting conservatives i can't imagine that the government bureaucrats wouldn't do that and then it was like uh, yeah, they did that. And that, to me, was the beginning of, well, dang, I got to now We're ask. We're using these bureaucratic installations that are supposed to be playing it down the middle, like the FBI, as tools of partisan politics. And yeah, and that's and, and to be blunt, that's wrong. We should absolutely, not do that. Absolutely. All right, 26 after the hour, way late. So I got to the Laura Logan. I hope that that makes sense to you, Lindsay. Thank you. Uh, if I've not paid anything else off, y'all tell me on the Members Nutrition Super Text line, and I'll pay it off. It's Supertalk 99.7 WTN. It is the Glock Store, GlockStore.com or Shoot270.com. Man, oh man, it is a wonderful thing to walk through the doors of the Glock Store and see the bright, the shiny. It is big. It is bold. The retail side is fabulous. The guy, you know what makes the Glock Store? I mean, obviously, they've got more Glocks than you can imagine. They've got a lot of different handguns. They've got a lot of different long guns. They've got accessories. They've got performance parts. They can customize your Glock for you. they got the Trump 45 Glock. I love that thing. But it's the friendly people, right? They understand how to treat you. Uh, they treat you to the level of your expertise. They're going to treat you felt like family, first and foremost. But whatever your level, if you're an expert marksman and you want to get some additional training through Shoot270.com, they can handle that. If you've never held a gun in your life, walk in and say, Matt Murphy sent me and I've never held a gun in my life. Just say that. They'll help you. They'll feed you baby birds. Never you fear. That's what they do at the Glock store. They are the biggest. They are the best. And I want you to go and see what I'm talking about. Elm Hill Pike off Air Lane Drive. Minutes away from the airport. Minutes away from the sound of my voice. It is the Glock store. Online at GlockStore.com or Shoot270.com.
Hey, Christopher has written in and said that I got it backwards when I was talking about the Glock store, and I want to correct the error. Um, I, did I say it was um, – I? it's on Airlane Drive off Elm Hill Pike. I may have said it's on Elm Hill Pike off Airlane Drive. One way or the other, it's right there on Airlane Drive near the airport. Uh, now I want to tell you about Members Nutrition and the incredible – crew and the incredible product that they present to you. I believe that we overdrug ourselves through pharmaceutical drugs. I believe that most of what ails us can be remedied by naturally occurring supplements and vitamins available to us. Uh, but you need to have the right company to get the right vitamins, to get the high quality supplements and make sure that they are prepared in the proper fashion. They do that at Members Nutrition. They're made right here in the good old USA. I can't say that about a lot of places. I mean, if you look on those bottles and You'll see a lot of different countries. You will not see the good old USA. At Members Nutrition, everything is made right here in U the U.S. Uh, these are high-quality products. These are vitamins and supplements for you. You know, we talk about the daily defense cleanse, uh, but anything on your mind, uh, men's health, women's health, uh, they've got vitamins, they've got supplements, uh, immunity health, um, relaxation supplements, energy supplements. They've got those, too, at Members Nutrition. And right now, you go there, membersnutrition.com. Do like I did. I order my supplements from members nutrition i encourage you to do that as well and you get 50 percent off you don't have to put in a code just 50 percent off go there today membersnutrition.com that's membersnutrition.com more updates on that bridge collapse in maryland the body of a child has been found in a river here in the volunteer state today we'll keep you updated 230 super talk 997 wtn those um those headlines are so compelling i tell you what we're gonna do we're going to go to them because it's 2.30. Uh, it, it's 2.30. So we're going to go straight to them. Yeah. Until we're Me and you, we're simpatico, Mac Mori. I got no <laughs> I got no clue why Bell K lets me act the way that I do. But he does. And this is the result. Where I, you, say, I require it. Well, it's true. But you know what? Uh, let's get some sanity back here with uh, the newscast with Mac Mori on Supertalk 99.7 WTN. Two thirty-two. I'm Mac Mori with your top stories. Currently, fifty-four degrees, mostly sunny outside on Music Row. Got a frost advisory in effect starting at three a.m. tomorrow morning. That'll last until nine a.m. Weather forecast coming up. Two minutes. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg and Vice Admiral Peter Gautier, U.S. Coast Guard Deputy Commandant for Operations, appearing at the White House briefing today, providing updates on and answering questions about the bridge incident in Maryland. They said that the vessel is stable, but there's a lot of fuel, oil, and cargo containers on board. They also said there are two missing containers overboard, but neither contain hazardous materials. Here's Vice Admiral Gautier. The Coast Guard's highest priority now is restoring the waterway for shipping, stabilizing the motor vessel Dolly and removing it from the site, and coordinating a maritime casualty investigation under the leadership of the National Transportation and Safety Board. And Secretary Buttigieg saying that anybody who is found to be responsible for the incident will be held accountable. They did not provide any estimate for how long it'll take to clear the channel or rebuild the bridge. The body of a child has been pulled from the Tennessee River on the Perry County side. Officials are now working to recover the body of an adult, and there is no identifying information about the two bodies. They don't believe that this is tied to any ongoing missing persons cases. This is the developing story. And the World Car of the Year Awards has been announced. Mike Dubusky has the latest from the New York International Auto Show. For the third year in a row, the Hyundai Group took top honors, winning the overall World Car of the Year Award for the Kia EV9. That three-row SUV also took home the EV of the Year trophy. BMW notched a win for the new 5 Series, taking home Luxury Car of the Year. And the Best Design Award went to the Toyota Prius, besting the Ferrari Purasangue. At the New York International Auto Show, I'm Mike Dubusky, ABC News. And that is the latest news. Weather forecast next. I'm Mac Maury, WTN News.
Tennessee Men's Clinic wants to see you. Fellas, let's talk about it. If you're low energy, if you're low motivation, low drive, if you chalk that up to middle age, if you're, you know, my age, 50, and you think, well, you know, th- these types of things happen when you get that age. Well, it doesn't have to be the case uh, because you lose certain things within your body over time. T levels are one of those things. Let's find out where you're going. Let's find out what's going on. Let's find out what's happening inside of your body with the Tennessee Men's Clinic. Uh, Ian Bass and the rest of his team, they've been doing this since 2014. They are the best in the business at making sure that your health is what it should be. Men, don't whistle past this graveyard. Let's handle it. If you've noticed energy loss, if you've noticed a lack of motivation or drive whether it's in the gym in the yard or i'll just go ahead and say it in the bedroom then it's time to make something happen it's time to get with tennessee men's clinic tennessee men's clinic.com is the website tennessee men's clinic.com two locations to serve you one's in midtown and the other's in cool springs the midtown location opens in 2014 the cool springs location opened about a year now uh serving those of you to the south of nashville tennessee men's clinic.com to find out more or schedule the appointment today you'll be glad you did The Dr. Gill Center for Back, Neck, and Chronic Pain Relief is located in Franklin. I want you to see the Dr. Gill Center. Why? Well, I want you to see them if you hurt. Now, if you don't hurt, if you're A-OK, well, then good for you. Congratulations. But if you do, if you have neck pain, knee pain, back pain, hip pain, elbow pain, wherever it hurts, they can assist you with the Dr. Gill Center for Back, Neck, and Chronic Pain Relief. They've been doing it for a long time and very, very soon. After he opened his doors, Dr. Gill recognized that he wanted a team approach. He wanted to make sure that you had an available chiropractic care physician for you at any moment that you need them. That's why he hired Dr. Wendy, Dr. V, Dr. Dominic, and the rest of the team at the Dr. Gill Center. And right now, I want you to get your pain taken care of without the need for needles, without the need for pills, and certainly without the consideration for surgery. Let's do it the right way. $49, complete examination, x-rays, results of findings, and they will develop an action plan right there on your initial visit. 615-882-4838. 882-4838. It's the Dr. Gill Center for Back Neck and Chronic Pain Relief in Franklin. Oh, man, oh, man, so much going on. I... 
on the Israel front, and I promise to pay this off, and Cameron uh, Smith is with us as normal in the 2 o'clock hour on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. You can read Cameron at the Tennessee, and he's also sometimes in USA Today. Gets wild. Yeah. You still writing uh, down in Alabama mm -hmm. at all? Yeah. I Sorry. write for AL.com, write for Gannett through the Tennessee and the papers in the state. And so if you got something you want to I mean, see I, in writing, let me know. I strongly encourage you to read his trash piece about giving the Republicans another chance on the budget. Don't. Uh, don't I love mischaracterizing don't, it. I love don't crash the plane, Matt. I, I, I love, have a question. I, you, Where are we on this legislation that you're assisting with uh, regarding parental rights and yes um so the last that i've heard i've uh sent a text message to jack johnson they had asked they had drafted the legislation and they had so as, as you know they filed the bill and then it was just kind of a placeholder they drafted the language for the legislation they sent it to me i gave them back sort of comments and including the hey do we want to deal with the fact that minors can wa waive their rights in a juvenile context and I have not yet heard back a response from Senator Johnson or his staff. Do you view that as negative, positive, or neither? I will at the end of this week. Okay. I mean, I, I look, I get it. They got a lot of stuff going on in the legislature. Yeah, that's, that's, they cannot figure out school choice to save their lives right now. Yeah. They're, they're bigger. I, this is a very important issue, but there are a lot of pressing issues. So I, I did that last week. If I go two weeks and don't hear anything, then... I'll reach the back the only out. reason I ask is I've been lying to a lot of chicks saying I co-wrote this bill. So good, 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 good. It's a great date night fighter. By a lot of chicks, Bell means his support Shut cobra up. spicy <laughs> and his two cats. Shut up, Su support cobra. And you don't know about his support. He got a support cobra named you Spicy. Have an emotional support cobra named Spicy. He from, calls it his. from where? Like how long have you had this cobra? Long enough that she's used to going to restaurants with me, and uh, now so any any doesn't take her to a restaurant. But he does. I, I can't. I can't believe it that he has a cobra in who lives in the same room with two kittens, and everything's cool. I could see him as an extra on Cobra Kai. Totally. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm surprised he doesn't have tarantula. Anytime a representative comes into this uh, studio from now on, they have to answer to me whether or not they voted in the affirmative to ban emotional support. Uh, animals from restaurants and if they do they get the spicy look of disapproval <laughs> the spicy look of disapproval well don't worry super talk tv folks the, there's there's throat coat for that slippery elm <laughs> yeah now extra slippery <laughs> it's uh, a snake the united nations voted in the security council uh to demand an israeli ceasefire and it's a deep subject and I just want your thought on it. I promised I would bring it up because it's concerning to me that the Biden administration decided to abstain. Yes. I mean, that's very, that indicates to me that Joe Biden in an election year is allowing the extremist pro Hamas wing of the Democrat Party to dictate his foreign policy decision making at the United Nations. Uh, yeah. That, that's exactly what happened there. I mean, right. John Fetter, Senator John Fetterman came out and was like, uh, not a good look, folks. He's a Democrat, and he's like, nope, this is not how we handle this in America. And I, I understand having differences. Guess how much Israel care? They don't like it, but guess how much they care right now? They're like, we're fighting a war against a terrorist regime that came and attacked us unprovoked. And you can argue, well, the situation in Palestine and like all in Gaza. But like, my point is, they didn't deserve that. Terror no. Terrorism is never justified, and that's what they're focused on. And what's interesting is the comments from Schumer, behavior by Biden, effectively Biden at the UN, um, is actually pushing unity in Israel. They're well, like, no, we don't have time for this garbage. We've got a war to fight. Well, and Benjamin Netanyahu makes the decision that he will not come to the United States of America and bend the knee to Joe Biden. If Joe Biden's not going to support Israel at the United Nations, good for Benjamin Netanyahu. Secondarily, I don't want I don't want military on the ground. I don't want I don't think you need military on the ground. I don't think you you n even necessarily need continued monetary support, although I'm fine with that uh, to a certain degree. But if the U.S. leaves Israel perceptually on the world stage, Israel could die as a result. Yeah. I mean, right? If, if, if the rest of the world doesn't believe that the U.S. will back Israel up 
if necessary? I mean, what happens with the Iranians? What happens when they, you know, drop this nonsense of making Hezbollah do their dirty work or Hamas do their dirty work and they just go after them? Yeah. If they don't think America is going to do. So, so don't, don't just think about Israel. This, that's important. But if this is one of our strongest allies. Yeah. That we have the strongest, one of the strongest relationships that we have. If we're willing to be like, you're on your own here, partner. That sends a signal to our other allies as well. It's like when the going gets tough and the, the pressure and the optics, we're, we're an optics driven country. And and I've long said, I don't want military. I, I don't think we need to send buckets of billions of dollars to Israel necessarily. You know, but you know what we do need to do? Hmm. Sit on the U.N. Security Council and vote no when the U.N. Security Council demands a ceasefire from Israel. Yeah, it's pretty basic. If we had if we had been three months into the Afghanistan war and the international community came to us and said, you guys really need to negotiate a ceasefire, we'd have told them to pound sand. We would have. I mean, that would be a situation where we would have with potentially withdrawn from the United Nations. Yeah. I mean, that was that severe. Insane. And that's it's very similar right now. Uh, so a quick question from the Members Nutrition Super Talk text line. I did not start listening right at noon. Show starts at noon. Uh, what happened to Todd Warner? Did he decide not to come? Todd Warner uh, was invited. Um, I was just looking at my, let's see. I was looking at my invite. Um, I said to Todd Warner this morning at 11 o'clock because I, I invited him after the show yesterday. I said, I understand things, uh, understand things got testy yesterday. Just wanted you to know the invitation is still open for you to discuss school choice. I think we well covered the recording part of the conversation, but we can talk about anything you like up to you. That's me saying I don't. Ha I'm not going to harp on this recording anymore. If you want to talk about school choice, we can talk about school choice. Uh, and I did not get a response from Mr. So, Warren. Tell me where you think school choice is, realistically. I do not know. I'll tell you, until this morning, I would have said it's dead for this session because I don't know. I think they have the Senate has the vote for the Senate version. The House have the votes. The House has the votes for the House version. But I don't know that you can marry the two and figure it out. Maybe you can. The governor's people tell me, and the governor's coming on Monday. Yeah. They say that he's working behind the scenes. I have been one to say, where's the governor and all yeah. this? Hello. They say the governor's working behind the scenes, but he does not want to get in front of the legislative process. In other words, he wants to let them. What I'm told, my sources tell me that the governor wants to let them figure it out. And at the point that he feels like he needs to step in and act as some sort of mediator or moderator between the two sides, he's going to do that. Yeah, he's too nice of a guy. I mean, this is about giving parents options. And, and I love Billy. I worked on Billy's transition. Great fan of Billy's. However, when it comes to school choice, either... You give parents these options, you do what needs to be done, or you're left with the status quo, which is just unacceptable. And the problem I've had with Republicans in Tennessee has been that it's there's just this leadership mush. And I, I loved Senator Johnson. Cameron Sexton is, has been effective on a number of hit, but it's individually effective in different ways. But I don't see the teamwork. I don't see the like. Here's the game plan. Let's roll. It's it's interesting, and maybe it's just a matter of perspective, but I remember in my years in Alabama, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, I looked at Tennessee politics, and I was so proud of the Tennessee political people managing to get things done that Alabama couldn't get done. Yeah. Right? I was like, now that's how you do it. You show some leadership. You herd your cats. You, make, you got a super majority. But Alabama, you can't get anything done. Look at Tennessee. They're getting all this done. Right. Now, the roles have flipped. Yep. Alabama passed school choice, for better or worse. <laughs> yeah. They made it happen. Tennessee, where you at? Yeah, it's, it's purely leadership. That's where we are right now. This issue needs leadership. Uh, we will not be able to talk about it today because I got to run, but um, this Nashville scene story is mm -hmm. odd. Pay attention, folks, to this one. This one looks kind of squirrely. Are you going to write about it, you think? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm going to talk about it at least tomorrow, but uh, if you've not paid attention to it, there was a reporter from the Nashville scene that was on the campus of Vanderbilt and was told to leave. Well, wasn't even given really the opportunity. No, to, they said, arrested. you have been told to leave already, and you didn't, so you're getting arrested. He's like, whoa, I'm a reporter. I'm covering this protest, this rally or yeah. whatever it is. And he got hauled off to jail. Yeah. And, and then they let they released and then they him. released him and let him go. A magistrate judge was like, "You have no cause here." And they and he's a reporter. Yeah, 
And let me tell you, I don't have any love for the Nashville scene. Man. We're not going to agree on much, but we will agree on this one. Yeah. That this is insane. So we'll talk about that more and, and look for Cameron riding on it on the Tennessee. And thank you, brother. Thank you, bud. Appreciate you. By the way, real quick, uh, David Kustoff apparently voted yes for the trillion dollars or so. So there's 8th Congressional District. Thank you to 7655. And apparently John Rhodes abstained or voted present. Yeah, I saw the abstention. <sighs> I'll do an entire hour on how much I hate that tomorrow. Brian Wilson's coming up next. Tell us what's happening on the drive. That's right after this.
Allow me to repair some misinformation presented by the Matt Murphy Radio Show, and we will get with Brian Wilson. We said that um, John Rose was voted president. He did not vote. Uh, apparently, and Bell alerted me to this, he was not present in the body. His son had surgery, and so he was not voting uh, because his son was under surgery, and he was there with his son and his wife, as he should have been. Just wanted to make sure that we clarify that. Brian Wilson joins us. Now, Mr. Wilson, I am told, that you were on the record as saying that if you had a nickel for every time you got detained as a reporter, that you would have a quarter. I would. <laughs> and I did the quick math. I did the math on it, Brian. Right. That's and That's about five times. That's right. five times. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it happens when you're a reporter because your job is to go out there and cover news. And, you, you know, there are boundaries by which reporters must operate. And and there's the public's right to know, and you gotta you gotta walk that fine line sometimes. And sometimes police officers just don't like the fact that you're there. And uh, I I have two uh, really remarkable stories. One, I ended up in the back of a squad car uh, in Amarillo, Texas, uh, when I was a younger reporter at a police shooting, which we were trying to get pictures. And, um, it's a, it's a humorous story. I don't have time to go into it now, but the other one actually was, uh, was more serious. I ended up in jail for two hours. Whoa. Uh, there, there's a jail cell, believe it or not, at, uh, what is now Reagan national back in the day, it was just called national airport in Washington, DC, right? Because they said I was somewhere I wasn't supposed to be, but I had permission to be there. <laughs> Uh, so it, it, it ended up okay. And all these accounts that almost always works out to the advantage of the reporter over time. But you may have to spend a little time behind the in the gray bar hotel in, in the, in the poke. to get it straightened out. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is uh, real quick? What's coming up on the drive today, Brian? Well, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. But uh, I am at some point today going to take a look back to the one year anniversary of the Covenant shootings. Try oh, yes. to do this in a thoughtful way and a respectful way. But also, you know, pointing out that one year later, there are still some questions and concerns that have not been addressed. And we'll get into that coming up on The Drive, starting at 3 o'clock. There he is, Brian Wilson. That's coming up right after the news. And the news is happening right now with Mac Mori on Supertalk 99.7 WT. And hug your loved ones. See you tomorrow, folks. So long.